All right, so I want to introduce the next speakers. Um, we have Carl Johan uh, Dahlstrom. That's correct. Okay. From Sony, uh, Sony Mobile. Uh, he's the developer relations, uh, head of developer relations there. Uh, have worked a lot with Sony over the last uh, probably nine months. It's been um, even been in conversation almost a year, uh, and it's been uh, it's been great. Really good to see a, a large OEM that stepped up and really um, you know embraced the development community, and we're excited to have them. And then also Johan is going to be also joining him, speaking a little bit about AOSP. So uh, I'm turn it over to you guys. Thank you for being here and uh, supporting and making this uh, a great first conference. Thank you, Darren. It's uh, great being here. It's uh, something we've been looking forward to for uh, actually ever since uh, Android Barbecue. How many have been to the Android Barbecue in here? So we have a few. That's great. Uh, we were the last year and uh, we thought this was really great for next year. set up uh, their own, a little bit more tech-focused uh, conference. So again, my name is Colin Nostrom. Uh, I'm heading up the developer relations team within Sony. And that uh, means that we run all the outreach channels towards uh, app developers, game developers, people creating services, plugins that we have heard of uh, just before this session, uh, but also we work with independent developers and the tech community, which is really important for us. So that's also been one of the reasons why we have engaged more and more with XDA. Uh, to begin with, the XDA didn't really know that we were present in the forums, which was kind of fun. Uh, but uh, we made them aware quite soon uh, because we needed help. I needed more uh, thanks. So yeah, we helped them with that one. <laughs> so, uh, and the channels that we work with are Developer World, uh, sonimobile.com slash developer. That's where you have our main channel, where we are sharing all the knowledge we have around our products. Uh, it's also driven more as a news blog, so you can see new things, uh, what we do. When there, for instance, we had uh, recently we did uh, open up the smartwatch, and we did that together with Arduino. These type of things you will find there beside just the specs and the SDKs. So there's a lot of things going on uh, in our channels, and of course. Uh, Sony Spirit Dev, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we also have our own YouTube channel. Uh, and Marcus Hansen, he's not in the room now, he's out there showing some of their products, is doing some great videos for us. So, all of these type of channels we run uh, with uh, the audience of the tech community. And I talk quite a lot with our PR department because we are still an official channel from Sony. But we also know that to developers, you can't really market it. You can't ask them, okay, which color do you like on your phone? Uh, can you do a, an app that suits that color? Because that would be typical PR department that would suggest something like that. Can you run something on Twitter and these kind of things? So we're really trying to uh, need you at, with the topics that you want to hear about and the ones things that you want to, do, to discuss. So once we're here, uh, it's not only me that runs the program, we also bring the experts uh, along with us. Uh, I mean, hmm. You on here can share a little bit more of his background. Uh, I think you've been working at Sony, or actually it was Ericsson as well, or yeah, uh, he's old. Uh, <laughs> been in the game for quite a while. We've been working together on uh, Java, Java ME, uh, in the early days, and uh, he's been working on Android since 2009. Well, one of the principal architects within Sony on Android, so probably any tech question you can come up with, he can probably answer it. Unless it's about plugins, I guess you're in the deeper layers. <laughs> so that's a little bit about us. Uh, and we work with, as I said, with application and game developers. How many app developers do we have in here doing apps? Great. Uh, and for you guys, I mean, we provide the tools uh, where we have an SDK, but the most important tool is the phone, and we'll come back to that. Uh, support, we have both the generic support, but also premium support where we have more one-on-ones and uh, you can get access to software uh, that is not yet released and these kind of things. So there are different layers of support for app and game developers. And the last part is a little bit how we work with them. It's about the promotion. How can we help them stand out uh, from the now one million apps in the Google Play Store, which is uh, yeah, quite a substantial amount of apps. And we do that through a channel called Sony Select. 
present on 20 million handsets today. Uh, but I was, I was not here today actually to address you guys, app and game developers. So, uh, being at an event with XDA, we thought that let's bring up the topic of how we support the custom ROM community. So, how many developers in here are working on? in that community of playing around with custom ROMs and in the lower layers. Oh, that's a great, so we have a good crowd in here, good mix, that's perfect. So it's not something that we have spoken about uh, previously externally, uh, how we work with uh, you guys and what kind of support we can give, uh, because sometimes there's things that we can't really answer. But again, it's the similar type of setup. We need to provide you with the right tools. We need to be able to give you support. Uh, it's a different channels that we use compared to the app and game developers. Uh, and then it's about open source. Uh, and that's also why Johan is here to share more on AUSP uh, and the project that we have been driving. Uh, and people have really loved us for uh, being as open as we are uh, with the AUSP project. And we'll give some news about that during the session as well. So, Coming back to the most important part that we cannot forget in Android, and that's not the SDK, or, well, the SDK is of course uh, quite important as well, but for us, being Sony, the most important developer tool is the product, the product itself. It is uh, how can we share the knowledge about our product versus our competitors. You have Samsung, you have HTC, LG, and others as well. They have their little flavor of the products, could have different type of specs, different SOC, uh, it could even have different uh, Android versions, these kind of things. So we need to be able to give you all the details needed uh, to support our products. So how many, when you are a game or an app developer, I guess how many of you have bumped into problems between devices in here? Only two, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I still believe that uh, there is a good amount of yeah, specifications and information we need to share about the product for you to make the best use out of it. And uh, looking at the lineup we have here, uh, Xperia Z, uh, I'll share a little bit more of that, but we're finally now present in the US through T-Mobile with Xperia Z and we're really happy to be there. Uh, we are actually going really well maybe not in the US at the moment, we are ramping up in the US, but a lot of other countries we are doing really well now with Sony. And I think it's thanks to the, the setup of products we have now, really beautiful ones. Uh, Xperia Z Ultra, uh, it was on display right outside here as well, and it's one of the phones you one is playing around with now, and based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon S800. I think actually it's the first phone out with the S800 which is really great, so it's a really powerful machine uh, with a 2.2 gigahertz quad-core processor, Adreno 330, and yeah, all the good stuff, 2 gigabyte of RAM, 6.4 inch screen, uh, full HD screen of course, and uh, all the things that comes along with so many technologies in the camera, in the display, so uh, we have some really great devices here, but uh, I will not drag on too much about them, of course the tablet set, as well being one of the most important tools uh, currently. Of course there are new things coming up from us all the time here. And being an app and game developer, I just wanted to mention it as well. Here in the US and Canada, we have a phone loader program. So you can borrow, we'll send you uh, a device for free that you can uh, verify your app on, which we think is a, a great service that we can provide here in the US and Canada. Uh, unfortunately for the rest of the world, we need to figure out a good way for you to access our devices and uh, I can't really share uh, the result of that but we, we have something really good coming up on what we can do for developers. So uh, another quite cool and new important tool for you guys is Smartwatch 2. It's also on display uh, outside here. Uh, it's not, uh, we're not allowed to turn it on yet. <laughs> for you guys, but we were allowed to bring it. <laughs> so, uh, there will be, it's, I mean, it, this is uh, not in the market, it's uh, a little bit out, but we have not showed it at any event before, uh, except the announcement event, so it's uh, a good opportunity to have a look at it at least. 
And with all the discussions around smart watches and these kind of things, uh, you should definitely have a look. It's a, a really cool device. It's a step up in a smart watch, uh, one, you could say, uh, with a bigger screen. Uh, this is also water resistant now and has some new sensors as well. Uh, but you can get more of the details uh, just right outside. And of course, though, we will update the SDK to support uh, the smartwatch as well. But again, I mean, from the previous session, we heard about the plugins framework. And if you have an existing app, make support for a smartwatch and use that as a second screen for notifications and other things, uh, which is really great to see. And it should be fairly easy to do so. Uh, there will be some more advanced APIs for you to work with with a smartwatch too than for the smartwatch which we're quite excited about to see what developers will do. So I touched upon the Sony add-on SDK. Uh, it will be updated in a quite near future when the smartwatch hits the, the market, I would say. And some new stuff that I can't share it on today. So when we are with Sony today, uh, we have had uh, some tough years, I would say, uh, for sure. But in 2013, we really see how we have come through. It's a really great year for Sony and Sony Mobile. We have, uh, we are now number two and number three in uh, many of the smartphone markets. Uh, of course, we have uh, some of the big, big uh, yeah, contestants of ours, so Samsung. We know they are really good and have some great products as well. But we believe that uh, we have a unique uh, offering with everything that we can offer from Sony with a wide uh, spectrum of the services and all the technology uh, and the designs that we now come up with. And it's not seen in the US, of course, but it, so now it's seen in the US, I mean, with the T-Mobile announcement that we will run with the carrier of T-Mobile with Xperia Z, which we're really happy about. So that's really great because we know there are so many developers here in the US and it is such an important market for the ecosystem of Android. So it's really great that we are gearing up in, uh, in the US and in America, I would say. Coming back again to the tools uh, that we have for, besides having a product, uh, how many have uh, knew about uh, how you can unlock the bootloader on a Sony device? I know you know, I think. <laughs> Perfect, so I have a few more here. Uh, because it's not, uh, when you're in the US, yeah, you don't hear much about Sony or Sony Mobile, but we wanted to share a little bit. Very easy to unlock the bootloader on a Sony Mobile device, and that's uh, just go to unlock bootloader and there you just click the acceptance, uh, you enter your IMEA number, and then out comes a uh, code that you can use uh, by fast boot to unlock the phone. So the reason why we have this. Um, we get a lot of questions. Oh, I just want to click get a key or something like that. I want to reverse it. But essentially what, what happens when you unlock the phone is that we wipe the DRM certificates and also the user partition. And the reason for that, the DRM certificates is about content providers that we have in the phone. We need to protect them as well because once the bootloader is unlocked, it's very easy to get root access and yeah, we need to uh, give honor to all the providers who have app developers as well, don't want their apps to be uh, pulled out of the phone and spread for free, for instance, and these kind of things as well. So there are some implications for, for unlocking the phone, but we think this is fair, and we do see the numbers uh, of how many that request the keys, and it is a substantial amount of people uh, that want to try new things, uh, and try, for instance, uh, the work from our independent developers that we support as well. So moving on a little bit, once you have unlocked the bootloader, uh, we have a tool, uh, this was a request that we received quite often, that oh, I have a, now I have a, tried some of the custom ROMs, Sioni and one from Free Xperia or MyUI or whatever type of ROM they have tried on our phones and want to get back to Sony software. And previously, once you unlock the phone, you cannot connect to any official Sony tool to flash it with uh, a new software again because the reason for that is that you have uh, may have voided your warranty and we can't guarantee 
what uh, a custom ROP have done to the hardware peripherals in the device. So for us to still have some sanity level, uh, we say that we can't connect to any other official flash tools. So what my team was doing is that we worked with uh, the, the, yeah, the flash tool providers and created a, a, a specific version for unlocked phones that st you can still go back to an official software from Sony, but it's uh, still being seen as unlocked. And uh, we still believe that's a, a fair deal. Independent developers, uh, as I don't touch upon much on app and game developers here, I want to focus on the custom ROM developers. Uh, we have a generic support for generic custom ROM developers that uh, we have through uh, our developer world channels that we do provide uh, and work very close with AUSP. Uh, and Joan will share more what AUSP really means and what you can get out of it and actually how we can create a win-win situation because that's, that's what we are. We need a collaboration from you guys. And that we did with uh, Alpha and Beta software. In the early days of ICS, uh, we released an alpha. How many, do you, anyone of you re remember that? That we were one of the first companies actually releasing an official alpha release for a phone. I know you did, uh, you, you on my back quite often. Because one of the reasons that why we do release alpha is that we wanted feedback from the community, what they thought about uh, the software. And we got so much good feedback, and we did that actually through XDA. We had threads on the next day where we went through and got a lot of great feedback from uh, tech users, what they thought about the release of ICS. It was not ready for sure, but we could see there were things that we needed to adapt. What it also did is that uh, people creating their own ROMs, they got uh, some new binaries that they could work with. Because even if you're creating a custom ROM, you're using a lot of our work. And that's something that we hear quite often. Uh, you so, you're so late. Why are you so late? The, the XDA community solved it all for you. You should fire all your engineers and uh, play XDA. I mean, <laughs> those type of questions or comments we see in our forums. And it's because they don't know exactly how it works. Because, I mean, they're using a lot of the work that we do, and we actually try to be as good as possible to support them with even more open source. Uh, but we have rules that we need to follow that is not really uh, applicable or followed by the community. We, can, we will touch upon a little bit about that when we share how 4.3, Android 4.3, how that will roll out, and what we have improved, and what the differences between a custom ROM compared to an official ROM from Sony. And because there are maybe not differences exactly how you develop it, but how you distribute it, and uh, what things that applies to that. Uh, I also want to say that we actually only had limited support at the XDA Developer Forum. And that is uh, due to we needed to find a way of focusing and doing the best with our resources. We are there, but we try to create uh, create something where the community can help each other. So we ask for help from the Free Xperia team or uh, Andrew Dodd or anyone else that have been working with our products that can reach out to the community and uh, help uh, maybe some of the newcomers in there how to create the kernels and these kind of things. So instead, um, we have set up something that we more refer to like the premium support. And uh, there's been some uh, big fuss when manufacturers are giving away phones. Uh, I think it was in 2011 where it was when Steve Conlag joined Samsung, I think. Uh, there was big news that they gave away phones to Xiaomi and all that. So but we didn't think it was a big deal. We do that with Apple game developers quite often. Um, why not support the tech community that want to help us make our devices better? So uh, there's been a substantial amount of uh, phones uh, sent to uh, some of the key developers, but all of this is based on preferences and experience. So it's not to anyone that we just hand out the phone and, and uh, here you have uh, create a custom ROM. It's when we see that there is value from our side as well, that they get input uh, to us and work with us and make our products better. That's when we see that we can help and work closer. And uh, yeah, you see uh, Aline, their colleague we have in over here, if you raise your hand. You have, uh, I don't know, you must have some automatic uh, response to the G-Talk that says hi, I don't know, 10, 15 people. I think every morning at Sony Mobile I get a hi from Aline. Uh, and that's really great. We have a really good relationship. 
with uh, some of the guys out there. That's also because uh, Alin Team is also supporting and helping uh, maybe the newcomers with custom roles for our phones as well. So if we help him, he help, uh, becomes our loudspeaker out there as well. Uh, another thing that we have not shared at all previously, uh, how many of you are recognized developer and access to the premium forums of XDA? It's great, so we have a few in here, so you know that there are some so-called hidden forums, and we have a, an even more hidden forum uh, for only Sony Mobile and a few selected uh, XDA uh, elite developers, where we have 30 of them or something, and we work together with XDA to select uh, a good amount of crowd that would be interested in working with our products, and then uh, I got acceptance internally to put some of our was uh, by that time it was called, what's it called, the team of, uh, was it the uh, meme team before, now it's something else, uh, I don't really remember where, what the team is called now, but it's one of the core teams uh, when it comes to the lower levels of the phones, uh, and we connected them in the XDA forum, where uh, I must say we are not experienced forum people are in, in the way that you are with thousands of comments and likes and thanks and these kind of things, but uh, it, we had some really good discussions in there. That, uh, and I know it was really appreciated that external uh, recognized developers could talk to our uh, core developers in a controlled way. Of course, we, there were things that we couldn't really comment on, Adam being a little bit provo provocative and these kind of things, but that's fine. <laughs> we should. Uh, really be open for all the questions. So, for instance, there was a, a really good uh, questions in these forums about why we don't uh, have uh, our kernel on a git with all the different commits and uh, you can follow our history. Uh, the community couldn't really understand why we did it. Uh, and these are also recognized developers. And first they were blaming us, you should do this, and this is just don't publish a zip file. But once we started explaining these are the reasons. It's like uh, we have lots of changes and it's uh, in the kernels and we can't keep track for a legal reason and do that daily. It just consumes too much resources uh, to have a live git up and running with all the commits that we have. We looked at the squashed uh, git and we're still investigating. I guess you and Bjorn have some ideas how we can do it. And th that was one of the solutions that turned up from these type of discussions in there. Of course, uh, we, they got to share things they wanted us to improve in our phones as well uh, in this channel. But again, I think still there is quite a lot of room for improvements uh, because we might not have been as active as we would have hoped to be. Uh, we had some good, of course, discussions in there, but again, we are not as experienced as uh, you are uh, in the forums. Uh, also want to touch upon open source part before I hand over to you one. Uh, we have quite a lot of open source archives uh, and we try to be as fast as possible in publishing them. Uh, as soon as we have released a new software, I have uh, Alin on my GTalk saying hi <laughs> and asking for the latest archives. Uh, but I think we have improved quite a lot over time here. Uh, now we, I think we're almost down to a week after the software has been released, we have the archive. Uh, published on our website because we know it's important to you guys to see uh, the later things we have done. Uh, but beside that, we also uh, are running our AUSB project. You want to share more on that? Uh, other projects there, Dynamic Sensor Hub. Actually, I think it, that was embraced by Sionian. What was it? Yes. yes. So we have uh, some really good contributions into the community as well. WebGL, another open source project that we have on our GitHub. Uh, check bug report by Palsas. Uh, he will run a presentation on that, which is quite interesting, uh, or really interesting to see the open source tool and how he tries to work with the community uh, to make uh, these type of tools better. And there is more uh, in the open source space for us. Uh, just touch upon a few projects. I mentioned it before. Uh, Arduino. How many have you have been working with Arduino? Do you know where it is? Yeah. That's great. So we have some of the developers in here that has been working with Arduino. We did a collaboration because one of the founders is actually from uh, our home city. So we did a collaboration together with uh, Arduino on the smartwatch. 
uh, which turned out to be really great. Uh, and again, it was both, first we needed to have some premium support where we shared more of the knowledge of the smartwatch with uh, the Arduino guys, so they could build a tool chain. So now there actually are a working tool chain for the smartwatch and Arduino, which uh, has been great to see. Uh, actually, I think there's been a small game built already on Arduino. Uh, um, just because we've got so many requests on why don't you just open up a smartwatch like you did for the phones uh, and let us create something new with it. And we saw the opportunity and uh, a good partner uh, and uh, managed to do so. Uh, another one uh, project we've been driving in this community is uh, together with XDA developers. We had the tablet set development, it should say challenge, Jeremy. <laughs> Where are you at? But uh, it was a competition or a challenge uh, that XDA uh, ran and we sponsored it with tablets and to see what kind of innovation they could do uh, on, uh, on a tablet uh, that got unlocked. And there's 10 really great projects. I know it's up for voting now, so please go over to the, I think it's at the Xperia tablet the forum at XDA where you read through the presentation of the projects and then you vote in the end. And then there's some nice prize uh, for the winner. It's just great to involve the community uh, and see what type of innovation uh, they can come up with. So now I've shared, uh, I've not covered everything for sure, so if there is any questions, I'm happy to answer.